you know, well, can I have Taco Bell? No. Oh my gosh! But you know what? I'm not going to jump in the middle of that drama because I'm going to wait till he calms down. Welcome to the Honestly Adoption Podcast, the show that gives hope and insight from real voices on the foster and adoption journey. Pull up a chair. We're glad you could join us. Here are your hosts, Mike and Kristen Berry. Friends, welcome back to the Honestly Adoption Podcast. So very glad you guys are here. We hope you guys get a lot out of this. If you are brand new, welcome, welcome. We're glad you guys are here. We are in part two of a brand new series we kicked off last week called Renew Your Response. Last week we talked about why we need to renew our response response to our children and why that matters, why it makes a huge difference when it comes to helping our children re-regulate. You guys, we are just um, we are just excited to deliver this content to you guys. Today, uh, we're going to be talking about renewing our response to triggered behavior, and you're going to hear some familiar voices in this episode. Our good friend Nicole Jurgis, um, Kristen Berry, and myself were the hosts, and we're playing this episode back. This was actually an episode from a couple of years ago, but um, we wanted to share it with you guys again because, man, when we can understand what is causing our children to behave the way they behave, it changes everything. If we can change our response to that, if we can replace, um, you know, contempt or sharpness with compassion and calmness. It can help our children re-regulate, and you're going to love this episode. Our discussion was just deep when it came to this topic, when it comes to this topic. And listen, before we jump into that episode, I want to let you guys know that right now we are uh, we have a brand new three-part live online workshop, 100% free, open for registration. In fact, if you're listening to this today on release day, it is June 17th, and the first session starts today at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The workshop is called the Transform, the Trauma Knowledge Transformation, and we are going to spend three different days talking about how we can transform our parenting, transform our relationship with our kids, with our, with our children, by changing how we respond to them, by gaining knowledge into childhood trauma, into how trauma has changed our children and how it causes certain behaviors. And that can change everything in our relationship with them, guys. We're so excited to deliver this workshop. Again, it's kicking off today, the Trauma Knowledge Transformation. And all you need to do to sign up for that is visit traumaknowledgemasterclass.com forward slash transformation. Save your spot. Space is limited, guys. We have thousands of people signed up for this. And again, it's 100% free. You can also click the link that we place in the notes uh, over on, if you're listening to this through our, our Honestly Adoption site, our podcast site, click the link. It'll take you right over there. You can save your spot. Guys, again, we're so glad you guys have joined us for this episode. And now on with the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Honestly Adoption podcast. Welcome to our YouTube audience, our blog audience. Uh, if you guys are watching this right now, you're watching it through YouTube or watching it through our blog, which is also through YouTube. So welcome back. Uh, we are right in the middle of this uh, podcast series called, this is actually season 13, episode 108. This season we're calling, uh, is it disobedience or something else? Talking about, you know, when when behaviors are make no sense at all, is it just a child who's behaving badly or is there something else going on? And we've been walking through um, some of the realities, some of the the truths that the, it could be a sensory issue. Um, it, it could be it's it's a trauma history, of course. But uh, in this episode, uh, we are talking about is it disobedience or is this a child who is triggered? And uh, let me introduce you to the crew of this, especially if this is the first time you guys have watched this um, through YouTube, or this is the first time you've been on our podcast at all. My name is Mike Barry, Kristen Barry over here, Nicole Jurgis, uh, our producer Matt McCarrick right there, and we're excited to connect with you guys uh, for the next few moments for this episode. So we're talking about uh, our children who we often can think, we often look at and think, is this just a rotten kid? 
or is there something else going on? And in this episode, we're talking about triggers, which uh, is a really big topic. Um, but uh, interestingly enough, the word trigger is a trigger for us mm-hmm. as as parents. So, yes. yeah, it's a big one, and we dive in. Miss let's it. dive into that. Yeah, you always. Oh my gosh, you never. You never. You always. <laughs> we never eat. You never feed me. Yeah, gaslighting at its finest, right? Well, you know, as we talk about this subject, I think that disobedience, um, we can kind of come face to face with what seems like really irrational thinking. Mm. And often we can think, you're just doing this to, to what? I don't know, to lure me into an argument, to frustrate me, to drive me to drinking. You, you know, you must be manipulating this whole situation because Mm. you're being disobedient. Only really those statements, you always, you always like my sister better. You never take time for me. That can feel really triggering for me. Us. Right. <laughs> I was going to say the triggers, when my kids are yeah. triggered, it seems to always trigger me. Like I have to really watch myself. Well, and that, that's, that can be the problem right there. I mean, we often tell parents, mm-hmm. listen, if you are dysregulated, your children are going to be, you, you become... And this steps on parents' toes at times, but this is a reality that we have to face that we can be the biggest triggers for our kids when we are not calm and regulated. collected and regulated. So right, we can be the bigger... our inner Karen Purvis. <laughs> yes, if only I could channel her all the time. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, so what happens here is this is a really vicious cycle. So our child can look disobedient because maybe they go zero to 60. They feel really angry. Um, the words they're saying are, oh, yeah. are really angry. Um, and, you know, maybe not so much disobedient, but anger or out of control or out of, or triggered. Um, but really, we're, we're talking about those things that we want to address as disobedience, but we have to take a step back. And when our kids are triggered, I think this is really hard and it triggers us is because it, it comes, it can come across pretty violent. It can be, these are the behaviors that you're going to mm-hmm. see that are really ramped up when our kids are triggered. Right. So what kinds of things are we talking about? We're talking about, um, you know, that child that's using those always and never statements. Mm -hmm. You never feed me. I mean, that's obviously not true. And because we're talking about being triggered, Mm -hmm. that kind of statement triggers me because I just spent a lot of money on groceries. And I feel like that's all I do is feed you 24-7. people. I'm like... There is I never, wish. it's like there's, so a, it's it feels that, like there's a hole in the back of the cabinet mm-hmm. sometimes. This oh food gosh. just disappears. Right. It's true. But when our children use that always or never statement, that can actually trigger us too. And so we get into this cycle of, uh, you know, a child that's saying things that can come across as disobedient. And actually we're doing things that are coming across as unloving or unkind. Mm-hmm. So when we've started to trigger each other, we're getting into this bad cycle sequence. Yeah. Right. So um, those always and never statements, that anger, all of a sudden we look over and our child is throwing chairs or screaming at her sister. Mm -hmm. Is that child just disobedient? They just woke up today and thought, I'm going to fight with my sister about a sweatshirt. Yeah. This just happened. You know, we were we talked about this before, but it, it started to happen again today. Like the dogs, I'm getting ready to come here and... The dogs want to eat breakfast in the morning, and there's my son wanting to pet them, and he is getting triggered because they don't want to be petted. And, I mean, he is kicking everything in my hallway, and, you know, I tried to handle it the best I could because I remembered this podcast Mm -hmm. from before and talking about it, how I was not (laughs) going to get triggered and how I was not going to ignore it and how I was going to validate his feelings, but... No, the dogs continue. I really wish the dogs would cooperate with me. Yeah, the if the dogs just would love just love him. your son, Could you just get out of your deeply? animal brain for five seconds. <laughs> just and love my cooperate son. With me. Yeah. <laughs> they really did. I mean, they kept coming back over to him and kissing on him and and letting him pet him. But then they wanted back to the food. But you know, it, it's things like this. But I failed to see it the first time. You know, um, we don't celebrate Mother's Day because it's a trigger. Yeah. Um, There are certain seasons that you just know either the child was removed during that time or that holiday brings them anxiety. Um, Birthdays. Birthdays. A big one. Yeah. Especially when we have children who are, you know, coming from the foster care system um, or who have been adopted. Birthday's a big one. Yeah. That was, you know, for some kids, the last time they were with their first mom. Mm -hmm. That's a pretty big deal. 
I think it's important to note to you know as we're talking about this, um, you know, it's easy to get in the mode of thinking that that the triggering or the triggered behaviors are are hap- they're happening in the here and now, like it's something that's happening right now. But like we're talking about here, this could be something years ago, right? Um, and it just keeps recurring. It's a recurring holiday or it's a recurring uh, season. Um, and, and it also, or it also could be something that happened earlier in the morning, and now it's playing out in the evening. Mm-hmm. We had an example um, just a couple of days ago where one of our children had something happen in the morning at school, and uh, I don't even know what it was, but it was something that triggered him. And then all of a sudden, there's this extreme behavior at home hours later but he's been bottling that up he's been carrying that out around, he's been carrying that with him mm-hmm. and then it suddenly plays out so sometimes you can look at the kid and think well it's it's happening in the here and now like whatever is going on with them something just happened right but it could have been something that was triggered hours earlier and it is festering it's simmering and suddenly somebody looks at him the wrong way or you know he's he finally gets out of school and he can let his guard down and it all comes spilling out. Mm-hmm. That happens all the time. We have that issue. Um, my son was triggered by something that someone said on a bus. And he goes to school. And I get a phone call probably about 10 minutes into since when school started. And he doesn't tell anyone. But on the bus, I guess someone had said something about his family, mm. his first family. And he was triggered. Yeah, But he couldn't. He couldn't talk about that with anyone, but he comes home and I'm like, dude, I mean, he's still going. Mm -hmm. And so later he's calm and he's sitting at the table and he's telling me someone said something on the bus about my family. Yeah. And I was up and it wasn't even connection. It wasn't like I did this because it was just like, hey, somebody said this on the bus today. And I'm like, oh, Mm -hmm. well, no wonder. Makes a lot of sense. I think I I actually kind of like the word triggered because it makes me think of, you know, that the, the big red button. Or something. What yeah. happens when I touch it? Yeah. Something <laughs> explodes somewhere. And we may not know what's inside of that box. Our children may not know right. what's inside of that box. Yeah. But because we know that our bodies hold on to all of these memories, all of these feelings, all of these emotions, you know, touching that button, that can open the box to something. Yeah. Sometimes that's a good thing. Um, when I smell the smell of my grandma's kitchen... I know that smell. I immediately think, oh, my grandma, mm-hmm. that's a good uh, memory. memory. So if, if someone were to, to kind of reach in and, and grab that button, I have these good feelings about my grandma. If a certain season comes along, I have a memory from my childhood. But this can also happen when uh, that trigger, that that button, opens up a box of emotions that are not good or yeah. memories that are not good or that our children haven't had a chance to process through. And so we kind of need to remember that when we see this um, disobedient behavior and we're not sure where it's come from, that, again, you know, we need to investigate where that comes from. One of the most important things that our children's therapists have been just really reiterating with us recently is that anger is a valid emotion. There is nothing wrong with yeah. anger. But anger is usually covering over something else. So if our child is screaming at the dinner table and we're like, oh, my gosh, you know, fighting for justice. I wanted the fork that I want or the special plate, you know, and we're thinking we don't understand what's happening. It's okay. You feel angry. But usually under there, there's something else. So Mm -hmm. what happened with your son and the dog the dog was not showing love to your son. And your son is, is thinking, no I'm really me. angry. This is terrible. But right below that, no one loves me. I'm not any good. And this is his core emotion that we finally got out from him with, you know, a little bit of help with therapy. But he does not feel wanted. He does not feel loved sometimes. He doesn't, He feels very insecure. Um, that he, because he has um, a disability, he's no good. We should just throw them away. And so that was feeding into that. That was that fear. Um, You know, my son has a lot of anger. Uh, My oldest son, a lot of anger. And it all comes down to these memories that he had and how fearful 
he mm-hmm. felt during that time, how insecure he felt as a little boy not being able to protect the people that he loved. So it all comes out as this anger. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I think there are really kind of three big um, emotions or feelings that a child may be having when they have that, what looks like disobedience, that kind of explosive response to something. Um, that's insecurity, hurt, and fear. Those are really some of the big things that are are boiling over when that trigger gets pushed for mm-hmm. our kids or that button gets pushed, yeah. trigger gets pulled. Um, we're seeing the anger. We're seeing the explosion. But underneath of it, we have insecurity. We have hurt feelings. We have a fear. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So what can we do? Well, that was the question I was going to ask, and because I think a lot of parents are wondering, okay, yeah, I, you're identifying everything that's going on with my child, but what what are the action steps? And I and I will mention that you know right now um, we have our trauma knowledge masterclass is open for enrollment, and that is one of the core uh, strategies that we walk parents through. What do you do when these when these behaviors are extreme, or when they don't make sense, or when it's disrupting everything in our household? So. But right here on this in this episode, let's walk. I want to walk people through some practical steps. So remember, always we're going to investigate first. Yeah. To the best of our ability. Now, if furniture is flying. We're right. going to need to do Get our best safe. to stop that. Let's make sure we're safe. <laughs> but then the the other part of our brain needs to be thinking: what was happening? What's happening right now? What happened earlier today? What's about to happen? So. Kids are not usually throwing furniture for no reason. Right. This is not a child who woke up and decided to be disobedient. So we see the behavior, and then we're going to investigate. And sometimes this um, can take years. And so sometimes you're just going to have to trust that there's a trigger happening. You don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. You don't know necessarily what's going on right now. But just know that this is a trigger. Because it took us a long time to get to this core feeling for my son. Right. Right. Another thing, like when you're investigating, this is when your community Mm -hmm. is really helpful because I think you're sometimes like the first person I call um, when I have something going on and, you know, we can sit down and talk about it. And sometimes I'll come to it myself like, oh, totally forgot. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's always good. Or to have someone else come in. I know my mom does that a lot of times because when you're in the middle of all of this chaos, sometimes you can't stop and investigate and see Mm -hmm. what's going on. Um, and so a lot of times my mom will come in and be like, Hey, have you noticed that this happens? Like when he gets this headache and Mm -hmm. stomach ache, and then you have this behavior. And so, um, you know, you've, you, this is where community kind of helps out sometimes because when you're in the middle of this, you're being triggered and you're angry and you're afraid and insecure. That kind of helps. I, and I, I think it's interesting. I'd forgotten about that situation with your mom noticing a pattern of behavior that you couldn't see in the moment. Mm -hmm. It's important to know that we're often talking about trauma. We're talking about stored up emotions. Um, But it is possible that your child is exploding in what looks like a disobedient way and they're actually having a seizure or Mm -hmm. they're actually, um, you know, having some type of medical response. So again, our investigation is going to be taking a step back, taking a step back, taking a step back. And so what we want to do with that is we're going to look at the moment. Well, it was a Tuesday. It was a Tuesday. It was almost dinner and chairs started flying. Okay. You, you know, you've gotten a little picture. But then what happened? We're going to take a step back. Who were well, they talking to? Right. Who was at the table? Three kids were at the table. Mm, I'm getting a bigger part of the story. Well, what happened before that? Oh, well, it was, you know, grandma's turn to pick the kids up from school. Ooh, what happened before that? So we're, we're taking a step back and a step back and a step back. Is it possible that we might find a, a medical cause for something? Mm-hmm. Maybe. So we're going to take, take a step back, take a step back. And try to get to the core. Now, very often with our kids, we're talking about the core being an emotion, a memory, and that trigger has been pulled. So as we're stepping back and we kind of get to that core feeling, remembering that we're always going to pass this on to our kids. So when do we do that? Do we do that while the furniture is flying? Heck no. (laughs) 
You get oh, everybody done. safe. You get everybody safe. Yeah, you get the your, chairs put back. Your you, number one goal in that in that instance is re-regulation. That's your that's your and that's what parents misunderstand oftentimes okay. because well, because we, you're triggered. We're triggered, yeah. but we also default. We have this default in us, and a lot of times it's because of how we were raised. Absolutely. You know, we were ra- I was raised by parents that if I'm if I'm behaving like that, they are going to shut me down. That yeah. would be the traditional approach, but. What we have learned in parenting kiddos from that have a trauma history uh, is that re-regulation is your number one goal. And, and oftentimes that can confuse parents because they think, well, it looks like I'm letting them off the hook. No. No, no, no. No, you're not. There is a time and a place to correct. But in that instance, when they are not in that logical frame of mind, you cannot, you cannot try to correct behavior. Right. You have got to bring them back. It's your responsibility to bring them into... Mm-hmm a logical, calm way of thinking. Because they're not listening to you anyway. No. I, I, well, I've you, seen you're parents not who there. are like yelling at their kids no. and their kids are yelling back and I'm like, hey, you, you just need to not... You're not getting yeah. anywhere. And they're you're like, not. what am I... Am I just supposed to let him go? He's calling me. And I'm like, is he yes. stopping? Is he stopping right now when He's you're not. yelling at him? It's He's just going to be escalated right. uh, more. And we've back seen that off. personally. We had that happen a couple of months ago with an instance, and I won't go into the full story, but one of our children wa- was highly dysregulated, highly triggered, um, to the point where we had to create a, a physical barrier uh-huh. between this child and our other children. And in that moment, we, because we were, we happened to be in our right mind of our, our own mm-hmm. calm and regulated state of being, we were able to look at him and say, okay, listen, let's just, let's just go talk about this somewhere else. We find out after we were able to, to get him out of that room that actually he's tired He's right. tired. Right. And he put himself to bed. He ended up, he's saying, I just need to go to bed. So we walked in there very calmly. And about 25 minutes later, after he was re-regulated, then almost just like clockwork, Kristen said, now I need to let you know that what you said to your brothers and sisters and what you did was not acceptable at all. And because he was now re-regulated, he responded with, okay, because right. she said, you need to make it right tomorrow, not now tomorrow and he said okay now if you would have tried to do that in, in the, the middle moment, of that wouldn't have worked right so what are we doing first we're investigating second we're waiting till our child is calm yeah third we're going to help our child process through that remember when they're calm and then fourth we're going to validate you're calm. oh and no, you're calm be, and we need to be calm yeah we, we need to so all you, be you calm you can't come in there <laughs> Good accusing point. your child of what they did you can't come at them like you were throwing chairs. Mm. It can't be that. So sometimes that, you know, like my husband, I came home and my son's up in his room. I can still hear him like kicking and screaming. My husband is sitting on the couch just like staring into space. My other kids have scattered at this point. Sometimes it can get mm-hmm. pretty rough. Yeah. I mean, he was really triggered. But I came in and I was very regulated. So it was my turn right. to Which pick points up Which <laughs> points to the fact that we are all, none of us are standing outside of this trench hollering instructions back no. we're in the trench right. with you like we struggle this through this every other within day probably yeah. the last two months yeah. so and it and it happens all the time so i had to come in i'm regulated and i could sit down and talk to my son i didn't say why did you throw why did you hit it yeah. was hey mm-hmm. what's going on yeah man right. that is when my son just broke down crying and like let all of his feelings out mm-hmm. right it wasn't because I'm some great parent. It was because I was regulated. I didn't deal with it, and I didn't come at him angry. Yeah. Because not only do you need to wait till your child is calm, you need to wait till you are calm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You said, okay, so you said investigate. Where were we at on that list? Um, we're going to investigate. That's getting back to right. the core feeling. Um, we're going to wait until our child is calm, and then, or until our child and we are calm. Uh, and then we're going to help the child process through that. Hmm. So we remember, we've already done the investigating. And we don't know what happened at school. We don't know what happened when they were a baby. But we may have done some investigating at this point, And we've said the trigger comes around dinner time or the trigger comes around Christmas. So we've already investigated. Now we're waiting till we're all calm and we're helping the child process. Um, then we're, we're validating in that processing, we're validating the emotion yeah. first, and then we can talk about the behavior. So um, in the situation with our son, it was okay that he felt 
angry. Yeah. It was okay that really his anger was tired. His anger was actually a sense of injustice that he could not play the video game all by himself for the whole night. So we were investigating. We're getting down to the core. What is the core? I, I felt like I wasn't going to get a turn. I felt like the other kids were your favorite. I felt like, okay, now we're getting to the core, and we're, but we're validating I was going to say, emotion. you have to address it. You can't just, like, let him sit there and speak. You know, you mm-hmm. have to kind of validate that. Like, mm-hmm. oh, I felt tired before. Man, I can be really grouchy. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen me when I'm tired? Yeah. Right. You know, and you've got to let them know, hey, other people feel tired. It's okay. Other yeah. people, mm-hmm. you know, my son's feeling was I'm not any good. Hey, dude, I have ADD. Like, I have brain issues, too. Like, my brain doesn't work. No, I don't know what normal is, but it right. doesn't None of work us do. normal. Right. Yeah. So I have to do things too that are different. You're not any different than anyone else. Your yeah. brain works different and we have to find a way to make that work well for you. So yeah, it, we didn't even address what he had done to my husband, what he had done to my other kids, what he had done to whoever. We were validating all of those emotions like first. Oh, and I find that usually once we've gotten to that place where we're calm and we're processing... My heart of compassion oh, takes right. over. Gosh, right. it breaks my heart. Now, my heart of compassion takes over for the whole family that just saw the furniture flying, the the verbal aggression, whatever. And so once we've worked ourselves through all those steps, then we can repair. And we can encourage our child to repair that. And also be able to understand what that trigger was and how they can avoid the behavior that has now caused all of this. Yeah. So it's not that we want to say, oh, baby, you're allowed to throw furniture because one time you, you were hurt were... as a child. Right. That's not okay. Yeah. Uh, but we're going to wait all the way till we're calm. We're re-regulated. Yeah. We understand where it came from. And then we're going to begin to hand that over to the child. So now our child can, what do you think you need to do? How did everybody feel, do you think? It sounds like you felt really scared at school today. How do you think everyone was feeling when the yeah. furniture was flying, when you were threatening to kill people? Oh, I think they felt pretty bad. Now, remember, a lot of parents are going to be saying, but my kid won't get there. They will get there. Yeah. They will. Yeah. But you have to get all the way there. You can't jump in the middle and say, how do you think you're making everyone feel? I mean, try yelling at me when I'm <sighs> dysregulated. I'll let you know. <laughs> So that's not going to work. Yes, she will. I think so, the men understand this. Don't come to your wife and say, calm down. Yeah. But right. she's like, that's not going to work. <laughs> Wait till we're all the way calm until our child has been heard. And I, I guarantee mm-hmm. you are going to get to a place where the child can say, that would have made me feel really scared. Right. Or I'm sorry that I did that. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Right. So let them restore let them understand themselves. And then as that trigger happens again, uh, for one of our sons, it is the word no. He'll tell you, I, I can't be told no. Well, you can be told no because you're human and this is the real world. <laughs> but he knows one of his triggers and he will tell you, my trigger is the word no. Yeah. Why is my trigger the word no? I didn't have enough food when I was a baby. I have been in, in and out of residential treatment. All stems back to I that have, trauma history. Right. No to me means no, my parents can't come visit this weekend. No means no, my parents didn't, you know, show up to court. No means. And it's hard to even say that because your heart starts to break even as you're sitting here talking about it. Because right. yeah. this is what we're talking about. When you can be regulated and you can mm-hmm. sit down and evaluate, evaluate those those emotions and everything, you can have a sense of compassion for that child. It helps you right. develop yeah. compassion. But it really knowing does. Once you've investigated, you've found that trigger, think about the way that we tell that child no. Well, we still tell him no. (laughs) But, you know, can I have Taco Bell? No. Oh, my gosh. But you know what? I'm not going to jump in the middle of that drama because I'm going to wait till he calms down. Yeah. Ah, there you are. So I used to engage with that thinking this is a bad kid that's doing bad things. This is just disobedience. I didn't know that no for him meant I'm not going to get any food. Now I know. So I might say, no, we're not going to get Taco Bell today. But remember, I fixed dinner at home. Now, he may melt down still. Mm -hmm. But now our meltdowns are are maybe, you know, 15 seconds of him folding his arms and pouting. Maybe he's telling me in the car, yeah, because you're poor and you can't even afford Taco Bell. Now, that's not very nice, and I don't appreciate (laughs) that. True story. But when (laughs) when I know 
I know this is a trigger for yeah. something deeper. I don't engage with that. I'm going to wait. No, but his your brain language has also changed because you're saying I'm not buying Taco Bell because I have. Remember, food at we home. have dinner. Yeah. So when we are investigating, we're going back. We we are more prepared, and then we're handing it on to our children because yeah. at some point in life, they're going to be told no, or they're going to have to wait for dinner, or their boss is going to say they can't do something. So remember that we're passing this knowledge on. We're helping our children discover themselves. Yeah. Now, there's one more component that we, we we don't have time to dive into in depth. We actually get into this in uh, our in our behavior understanding and management module in our new course, Trauma Knowledge Masterclass. But that is um, prevention. Mm-hmm. Um, and what I mean by that is that there is a moment uh, leading up to the behavior mm-hmm. where the trigger happens. Mm-hmm. And when you can identify that, one of the things that we do with our kids is we have a code word. When our child is feeling like they're about mm-hmm. to be triggered, they can say a code word and immediately we will stop. We'll drop what we're doing. We will take them. We will go off with them, you know, in a separate room, separate area in our property and have a conversation with them. Those are prevention tactics. Again, we dive into that in depth mm-hmm. in Trauma Knowledge Masterclass. Um, but that is something to keep in mind mm-hmm. um, is is keep in mind, begin to ask yourself, you can even trace back to past situations like where, where, what, what was the point where the trigger uh, was flipped, you know, or the trigger was mm-hmm. pulled. Um, and then that can help you sometimes prevent um, the, the all out meltdowns. Mm-hmm. Not always, but sometimes it can when you can identify that. So something, something quick to mention, whole nother podcast episode. But again, it is something we dive deep into in our trauma knowledge masterclass. So another great discussion. Uh, thank you guys for those of you that are watching on YouTube. Thanks for joining us for this, um, tuning into this. Um, this has been a great episode. And uh, you have heard us mention Trauma Knowledge Masterclass throughout this episode. That is open for enrollment right now. And Trauma Knowledge Masterclass has been is created to help you understand trauma in a very simple way, uh, help you make sense of behaviors and how to manage those behaviors, but also how to take all of that together and then better advocate for your child. It's a full-blown course, completely online. You can find out more right now um, by visiting traumaknowledgemasterclass.com. Thank you guys again for uh, uh, joining us, if I can get my word out there. Um, Also, make sure you jump over to uh, honestlyadoption.com. You can find links to everything we mentioned in this episode. Leave us a comment. Subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, all those places. Spotify, we're on Spotify as well. We also want to thank our sponsors, uh, Inspire Church, uh, here in central Indiana. They've provided this amazing studio for us, and we're super grateful um, for their partnership and their friendship. And you guys, it's been great to have you join us uh, this week, and we will see you guys next time on the Honestly Adoption Podcast. 